Hi, I'm Jessica from Jessica Wanders, and today I'm going to start a new series called How Much Food Can I Grow? <laughs> to run alongside any other like food and cooking and budgeting and, uh, and cheap meal prep series that I have going on. I, I want it to run all year from now until the end of the growing season. If you've seen any of my Wander Harvest Cook videos, you know that I have a fair sized garden and I do have other areas in my third of an acre, like suburban backyard that I try to grow food in. What I'm really interested in is if you had less space, how much food could you grow? So I'm thinking I'll devote one bed in my garden, like a 10 by three raised garden bed, um, or maybe build a new one. I always like building new garden beds and then also something like uh like grow bags if you only had maybe like two by two square feet or or four one foot grow bags that you could grow in how much food could you grow if you had less space I'm gonna plant some smaller like mixed beds uh mixed vegetable beds see how much food I can grow out of some smaller beds for people who have like if you have less space or a patio or something like that how much food could you grow for the whole garden my goal is to grow over 1,000 pounds of produce for the entire year that's a pretty reasonable goal last year i noticed it was coming down because our fruit trees suffered so depending on the weather i guess a thousand pounds is a nice round number and we'll see if we can grow more than that I want to keep track of the garden as a whole, including the new smaller beds, but each uh, smaller bed individually. So how much you could grow in a 10 by three bed or how much can you grow in a two by two grow bag. I'll update those as I harvest out of each of those different beds, but they'll all be combined into a grand total at the end of the growing season to try to reach that thousand pounds. In this video, I'm sorting through seeds, going through what I have, making lists of what I need to buy, um, what I normally plant in the garden, and what has done well and what hasn't done well. And I'm also going to go over the gear that I use to start my seeds in the house, if you're interested in that. I'm hoping to put out a video for this series at least once a month, hopefully maybe every couple of weeks, just to show the progress and to show what I'm harvesting. And it'll take a little while to get things started, but I'll show you how they're growing in the seed trays and then show you, it's still lots pretty snowy out in the garden, but as it gets warmer, uh, I'll show plantings and stuff like that. I am not a gardening expert. There are tons of people on YouTube that will show you how to grow things and have great tips on, on gardening. I'm more interested in inexpensive food. So I want to know how much can I grow? How much of my own groceries uh, can I produce in my own backyard? So that's what this series is about. I do have a lot of my own seeds and all, obviously a lot of my own equipment for seed starting, but if I have to buy new stuff, I will show you the price of them. I will list a lot of the equipment that I have in the description box below for Amazon links to the stuff that I use. If you're interested in having a look or whatever, if you want to buy some grow bags and see how much food you can grow on your balcony that's, and, and, and try the experiment along with me. I'm going to try to put out a new video in this specific series at least once a month, probably every two weeks. Uh, show how things are growing and what I'm starting and what I'm putting into the garden. And uh, yeah, I hope that I can see you guys here. So if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more videos from me. Let's go have a look at what seeds I have and what gear I have and what stuff I have to get this challenge started. If you're following my pantry challenge, this seems unfair. I'm using my beans up in the pantry for, for planting in the garden. There we go. Well, here's my seeds for the 2022 growing season. I went through them all and I've decided which ones I have to pick up. And I have to get some more kohlrabi, which I like in salads, it's quite nice. Maybe some more baby limas, but they never grow very well. So, and I've got some other lima beans. If I want to get some more chamomile, that would be nice. I'd dry it for teas. I really like this Tom Thumb cabbage. 
And so I'll probably pick up, definitely pick up some more of that. <laughs> and these loofahs, I've bought these loofahs twice and tried to grow them and both times it hasn't worked. So I'm probably not going to attempt this this year. And I will do up a flat of marigolds to spread throughout the garden. These are my saved seeds. Um, and I also plant a couple of these large Russian sunflowers. They're just really impressive and look really cool. And I do try to grow peanut plants just to see if I can get some peanuts. I usually do, and the birds uh, like them when I do, so that's just a fun project. I do usually try to save up safe seeds. I'm learning how to save seeds. So these are my spinach seeds. These are the ones that I haven't broken up or anything. And this is the Bloomsdale Savoy that I use. I use another one. I think I'll have to pick up the other one that I use. I do grow a bunch of greens. Um, this Butter crunch is nice, a lot like the Tom's Thumb. It's Ruby Streaks is like a type of mustard. It didn't grow last year, so I'm gonna try again. This Grand Rapids is my go-to green lettuce. Uh, these Pak Choi, Joy Choi Hybrid. I actually, these are my saved seeds. Um, we'll see if they sprout again this year. I tried to grow these little cabbages, Sui Choi and uh, Sui Choi cabbage, and it didn't work. I think it got too hot too fast and they didn't like it very much. I'm not sure what I can do about it. I can try starting them inside early and planting them out, so I might do that. This dwarf green curled kale grew really well here. I'll grow it again this year. Another green Swiss chard I grew. It was beautiful. Uh, I'm not sure I like Swiss chard all that much, but I think I'll grow it again just because it looks gorgeous and I can try it in some different things and see if I can like it. This is arugula. It also, along with this mustard, got overgrown last year so I'm going to try it again in a different location. Uh, what have I got? This iceberg lettuce, I have these seeds. Uh, it never really makes it to a head so I'll plant it and then I'll probably be just pointed again. This is just a, a lettuce mix of stuff that I've had forever I need to use it. This is my go-to red lettuce. I love it. It's called Ruby and I will definitely plant uh, that. I, I pull my lettuce off as a cut and come again so I leave it in the ground until it eventually bolts and I just take off the outside leaves and keep letting the plant grow. Those are my greens that I grow. These are um, my onions. I'm going to get them started pretty soon. I just have regular early yellow onions. I bought these Calibra onions uh, a while ago and they're pretty nice. Then these Boratana. Oh, onions are like flat onions. I'm not sure I like them. They're kind of novel or whatever and they don't, I mean they do store really well and I've still got some seeds so I'll probably plant them again. Uh, these are my favorite red onions, red wing. They grow excellent um, and I'm definitely going to plant them again. And then I grow these evergreen bunching, uh, white bunching onions. They're not like green onions though. Are they green onions? Anyway, I treat them like green onions. They're called annual bunching onions. These were really great last year. I, I loved them for omelets and stuff. They were great and very prolific and they grew really well. I've got these shallots. The shallots did really well. I'll definitely be planting these again. There's still some in the basement. They store really well. These giant leeks, uh, again, I'll plant those. Those are pretty regular. Here, scallion or bunching onion. This ramrod, I'm not sure exactly if they or <laughs> if they are a scallion or bunching on it, I should check and see which one they are. But I'm gonna plant as many of those kind of green onions and um, scallions as, as I can, or shallots. See those shallots? Scallions, shallots. I don't know, it's all so confused. I'm still a bit unsure about the differences between those. So lots of onions, always a lot of onions. Here are my tomatoes. Um, the ones that I like in, in my zone 6B is these Sweet Millions. They grow a ton of tomatoes. These Sweeties are pretty good too. I usually go with the Sweet Millions. Now I'm just using up what's left of this Sweetie. And I, because I don't grow too many, I love these Sun Golds. They're orange and super yummy. Last year I tried these yellow pear shaped and they were fun, especially in salads and stuff. Those are the cherry tomatoes that I grow. Those I grow Roma Organic. Last year I bought this brand of Italian Roma tomatoes. Okay, I got my tea. <laughs> So oh, I haven't tried these Roma tomatoes, but I think I will try them this this year. Uh, I used to plant a lot of these crimson uh, cushion beef steaks. They're giant. Even the brandy wine pink, beautiful heirloom tomatoes. 
uh, in this Bonnie bust is just like an heirloom regular tomato. These ones are huge and I don't really eat slicing tomatoes enough to make it worth it. <sighs> I keep planting them. They take up a lot of space in the garden and I don't really like them for making like sauces and canning and stuff. So these I'm just using up these seeds. I might maybe plant one. My go-tos for regular tomatoes are uh, money maker, they're called. They grow really well, and I always plant some of these Amish paste. They're ginormous kind of paste tomatoes. I like them a lot. I'm going to plant a lot less tomatoes this year. I think I was overwhelmed with tomatoes last year, so and that'll free up some space in the garden for other things. I haven't tried this particular brand of Borlotti beans, but all the Borlotti beans are quite crazy prolific. These are full of saved seeds, so... I might try those ones this year though. These are just green beans, tender green beans, uh, as long as well as these uh, sort of blue lake pole beans. I like both of these as long as it doesn't get too hot. Blue lake pole, blue lake pole beans. And I think I keep trying soybeans. They don't grow very well here. Um, I don't. I think I'll plant them in a different place. Uh, we can keep trying them. I like these Kentucky Wonder beans. They have like a brown seed. So even if they go for a long time, you can kind of see them in there. They're brown. And you probably saw them in my not really 16 bean chili I made. And I had saved some seeds from something. So these are Kentucky Wonder, just green beans. I'll plant some more of those too. I don't know if I bought these for... containers stringless stringless <laughs> that's what they always say dark green pods yeah I got, looks like this is a new pack that i bought these are bush green beans i'll definitely plant those along with my yellow wax uh, these are yellow wax bush beans as well i love those nice and compact don't go crazy so those uh, i like these golden marie vining some, I can't get them to quite turn that color, so I don't know what's up with that. Uh, I like these are another bush bean. These dragon's tongue are my favorite just for eating. They're so soft. They're never stringy, and they're gorgeous. They look like this when you pick them, and then they turn green when you boil them. Those are, I love them. I eat them, and they're really early, too, so they're kind of the first green beans you're eating fresh out of the garden. Uh, I don't know about pinto beans. <laughs> I, they didn't do well, even though I keep kind of trying to plant them. And the same with these lima beans. I try to plant them. I think that the ants really love them. And I don't like spraying pesticides in my garden, so it's hard to control them. And I never really get a very good harvest when I try to grow lima beans. This is a, a new one that I bought last year, too. I don't think I used it. I didn't see packet isn't open. Esmeralda, they look like flat beans. It's so funny. They won't sell us a garden inoculant, or they weren't last year because uh, people were abusing it or something. I don't know. That was the explanation, but I couldn't get any inoculant for my beans anywhere. Stringless. <laughs> so that's exciting. So I'll definitely be, maybe try one or two plants of that. These are more... Lima beans, put these over here. That's the lima beans. Broad Windsor. I keep trying lima beans, they're not doing well. One day I'll give up. And these are my regular drying beans. I love these. You put them in the ground, you leave them alone, you water them, and then when they look dead and dying and crispy and dried, you gather them up and you have beans. So it's my favorite thing. I do. Black turtle beans. Taylor Horticulture cranberry beans. I do. Oh, there they are. Oops. I do uh, cassoulet beans. Uh, I had to find my drying beans up that were outside and not shelled yet. In order to get some kidney beans, I will go through these and get the kidney beans. I'm not sure what beans these are, but some other kind of cranberry beans, black beans, cassoulet beans. But I don't have any uh, dark red kidney beans to plant, so I got to grab them out of this mix front that I grew last year. I'll do that. And then... These calypso beans, I think I planted them last year, but I didn't see a single one. So I'm gonna, I've got some left. I'm gonna try again. My beans got a little overwhelmed last year. I wasn't out in the garden as much as I should be because of the fires that we had. It was really hard to breathe. I have these scarlet runner beans. 
I don't even normally eat these beans, <laughs> although you can, and they're beautiful. And, uh, and I'll show you them when you pick them. They're a beautiful color. But the plant is quite gorgeous, has beautiful red flowers. The bees like it. It's like a super vining plant. So I'll pick somewhere to plant it this year and enjoy it. But yes, you, you can definitely eat the beans as well. And then these are chickpeas that I saved, and I will be planting those. I'm going to try to grow more of those, maybe more of chickpeas and less tomatoes. All right, I do grow a lot of peppers. I grow uh, Hungarian cheese, and I've got some save seeds in there. They're like these red hot cherries, only bigger and not spicy. Not very spicy. I wish there was a picture on here, but there isn't. And then I grow California Wonder Green Peppers. Uh, I tried to grow these paprika peppers. You're supposed to be able to dry them and turn them into paprika, which is hilarious. Paprika, paprika in the chat. This is hilarious. I tried, I tried two years. It's not really working out for me, but I am uh, stubborn and persistent. Um, I grow jalapenos. Uh, I bought these red habaneros, but uh, I might try them, but we normally grow the orange variety and I save my own seeds for that. Uh, these are these Natan Nardello or Jimmy Nardello peppers that are quite nice, very flavorful. They grow really well, um, and they're pretty prolific, so I like them. These are just orange bell peppers that I like to grow. They hardly ever make it to the point where they turn orange. I keep being kind of hopeful, <laughs> but Hungarian hot wax are pretty staple for our um, pepper or pickled peppers. Nice in there. These uh, chili darbles are really super prolific. I got a seed from a woman in Mexico and I've just been continuously saving seeds. I like them a lot. Quite spicy, different kind of flavor. More of a Mexican spicy, like when you do pepper, the pepper flakes. They're more orange than, uh, than red, than cayenne flakes. I like the flavors a little. It's more smoky too. These ancho poblanos, um, I've been growing these. I got some in the freezer actually. Huh. for stuffing and stuff like that. I think I'm going to grow less of these because each plant is pretty, grows a lot if it's doing well. Hungarian hot wax, they go into the pickled pepper mix. And same with the banana, just regular banana. Plus I like them in salad, sweet, ban sweet banana peppers. Uh, lots of cayennes. We use them. My husband used, puts them on every, all the food. <laughs> and I make the, the um, chili, pe chili flakes, pepper flakes out of them. And these red hot cherry, if they, they're nice, they're nice and spicy. And we like to stuff them with um, like feta cheese and stuff and have them as snacks. So those are my, that's my pepper lineup. And I will be starting them inside under grow lights. It's a few other kinds of seeds, a few other ones, just a sec. I hope this is my favorite Danish ball head. I want to grow more cabbage this year because I have figured out how to make sauerkraut and I would also like to, there's a recipe to can sauerkraut and I would like to try that. So I'm going to grow a lot of cabbage. It grows really well here. So I like this one. I um, obviously do Brussels sprouts. They're hard to grow, but I like them. Broccoli kind of doesn't make super big heads where I am, but you can get the like sprouts after you chop the main head off and it goes for quite some time. It does okay. And we'll try that again. Cauliflower is a wash. I can't grow cauliflower. I don't know why I can't grow cauliflower. You guys need to give me cauliflower growing tips. It just doesn't stay as a head. I fold the leaf. I don't know. I've tried all kinds of things, but I can't get it. I think it's just too hot, too fast here. Rutabaga I love and I will grow again. And these are the carrots that I grow. These, can't see it. Red cord chantonet and these uh, long imperators and I save my own car carrot seeds as well. Um, these are the turnips that I like. I like the white ones, early snowball, uh, but not as much as these purple top white globes. These are my favorites. This is probably the only one I'm gonna grow this year because the white ones kind of tend to get a bit buggy. I don't know, I could just pick them really early. Maybe that's what I'll do. Generally for cucumbers, I need a long English cucumber. Here, let's walk over here. Ooh. I need a long English cucumber and then a pickling cucumber. Uh, I didn't even try these straight eight. These are like just a regular slicer. I think I'll try those, but I try, my go-tos are Markimores 
for those. These are the same kind of cucumber, Market Mars and Straight Eight. So I'll plant one of those. I do like Market Mars, it's my go-to regular cucumber. And then I've got pickling cucumbers. This is what I use SMR 58 for pickling cukes. And then I'm gonna try this tasty green. They're long, they're long English cucumbers. This one, yeah. I like sugar baby watermelons, but I have found and I'm leaning towards these crimson sweet. They're bigger, they grow better. I think I'm gonna plant a whole bunch more watermelons this year if I can find the space for them. I mean, you can always freeze it, right, in balls. And then I'm gonna try a cantaloupe. <laughs> cantaloupe, cantaloupe is really tricky to pick it when it's ripe, but I'm getting better, I think. I've got dill seeds, but we hardly ever have to plant dill. And actually, I don't use dill seeds much of them. I don't actually use them. Um, but I'll plant some if they don't pop up. I've got these regular dill seeds. I've got a lot of dill seeds. Like, I'm going to need it. But once you plant dill, it never goes away. So it's nice. I don't mind it. We use it, need it for our pickles and stuff. So that's good. I also like to plant some peppermint. Uh, sesame I keep trying to grow so that's fun and interesting uh, I've been trying cumin but it just keeps dying so I don't know I'll try again basil obviously tons for pesto I will plant a lot of basil this basil blend of different kinds of basil I am queen this is a Thai basil I don't know if it's it tastes a little bit different it doesn't grow very well here so there's that but I do I don't mind it in, in some dishes, so that's nice to have. I also plant a lot of parsley and then I dry parsley. More basil, <laughs> lots of basil. Cilantro is fun. And then cilantro, more cilantro. Rosemary, I love. Thyme, grows okay. It bolts uh, and flowers and bolts. It bolts pretty fast, but I think that it's supposed to do that. So I just keep using it. They're tiny and difficult to process, but it's such a great flavor. I do a little kind of herb, herby garden. I went through this a bowl of kind of mixed beans that I had from, from taking beans out of the shells and I got some kidney beans that I can plant this year. I could go through the rest of the beans or I could make like a bean soup and just use this uh, mix of beans. There's some black beans in here that I am not super familiar with. I did plant these calypso beans, but I didn't grow any beans that really looked that black and white. But uh, these beans I thought were new this year and they're kind of black and white. I should separate my beans when I plant them better than I do. But those are quite black. Like they could be pinto beans, which I didn't think that I got any of, but they're a bit too black, I think, for pinto beans. So if you have any idea, let me know. I mean, I don't mind. I'll eat beans, but it's fun to have an idea. I'll do better labeling them this year. And I do want some of these cool looking ones. But we got the kidney beans out of the mix. This is probably going to be a bean soup mix. These are the squashes that I grow, and I grow way too many, clearly. <laughs> if you've watched any of my other series, I like spaghetti squash. I did. I do like these butter cups, but they don't store very well, but they're kind of yummy. I do like the patty pans. I always grow too many. I'm gonna try really hard this year to not grow too many. Um, and and these ones, the same, different, a different uh, type. Those are Benny's Green Tint. Those are a blend. I like the yellow ones. These are Black Beauty. Those are zucchinis. I'll grow lots of those. I like these Baby Blue Hubbards. They keep well, they taste good, and they're good for making pumpkin pies, actually. These early crookneck squash, I grew them for the first time last year. They did okay. I don't know how much I enjoy them. They're kind of cute though. And then these butternut squash, uh, they store well. I tried to grow them last year. None of them produced. I mean, they plants grew. They just got overgrown. I didn't manage my squashes very well last year. What's this one? Goldie. Not sure what that one is. That might be yellow zucchini, actually. And more black beauty, beauty zucchini good producer oh there's some more yellow zucchini yellow zucchini those are good 
Buttercup there, good too, I like them. I like the taste of these ones actually quite a bit. It's like really sweet. Parsnips, they didn't really grow very well here. It got, I think, too hot. I might try them again, but I haven't had much luck with them, but I just have extra seeds. Um, these ones are Scarlet Globe. They do the best here. I will plant most of my radishes as Scarlet Globes. Um, sometimes I've tried these other ones, Amethyst, they did okay. Um, not great. I might plant a few. And these Starbursts were supposed to be, look how amazing they're supposed to be. But <laughs> none of mine looked like that. So I don't know what happened. Uh, these little ice are sparklers. They're kind of small and also not as productive as the Scarlet Globes for me here. And these daikon radishes didn't work. So I will be mostly planting these uh, Scarlet Globes. They keep really well in the fridge. Uh, let's see, beets. I plant a lot of beets. It's for pickled beets and all kinds of things. Uh, these early wonders are just great. These Detroit dark red are lovely too. And of course, these are the Aunt Molly's ground cherries, which really grow wild in my yard now, but I might plant one or two. You never know. They seem to come up no problems. I tried tomatillos and I actually, these are purple tomatillos. I actually am not a, a fan, so I probably won't plant them again. I tried them. I tried to make tomatillo salsa. I didn't enjoy it, so there you go. I've tried a couple times to grow these goji berries and they're not working. <laughs> Artichokes, I will plant. I love them. They're beautiful. Also nice looking plant. And then if you don't pick them, they um, turn into like purple thistles and are just gorgeous too. Um, I'll probably buy, I have a place to replace an asparagus crown, so I might buy one. These take forever, up to three years to produce, so I probably won't start it from seed. Celery has to start from seed. Um, I'll do that pretty quick right away. And then I do corn. I usually do, uh, do this one is just a peaches and cream early corn. And then I will grow also either a golden jubilee or uh, this bantam grows really well for because it's an heirloom and I use it I use it dried for making cornmeal but they're also very yummy I like them a lot so I tried popcorn I probably won't try popcorn this year <laughs> they turned out really small um, but it was a fun experiment and then peas loads and loads of peas my favorite pea is this little marvel I sometimes experiment with saved seeds and how well they do so, but mostly it's just a whole lot of little marble peas. These are all little marbles because I plant hundreds and hundreds of pea plants. So here's all of our seeds. I think that, you know, it's an awful lot of work to do a garden and, uh, and I'm gonna find out if it's if it's cheaper, but there are other benefits to having your own garden. Obviously, you know uh, where it's been, you know how what what chemicals have been used on it. You, you have it available when there might be shortages. I don't know. There's lots of reasons to have a garden and want to have a garden. So that kind of go beyond whether or not it's um, always cheaper. Um, it's obviously cheaper to grow more expensive vegetables. I mean, potatoes, I'm not sure that they come out cheaper growing your own because potatoes, sometimes you can get uh, really on sale and carrots too, but the carrots from the garden taste so much better and they last so much longer just in the fridge. It's amazing. It makes you wonder how old the carrots are in the grocery stores when you've grown your own carrots and can see how long they can last, you know, in the fridge. So, so yeah, there's a lot of benefits to growing. I love seeing in, uh, stuff growing in the garden. I love being able to walk outside and just pick a handful of cherry tomatoes and eat them. And it, so I, I love it <laughs> and, I'll, and or a pepper or whatever, just being able to eat food out of your yard to me is quite satisfying. So there we go. We're gonna look at some gear that I use to start all my seeds. So I use these Jiffy Hydro Grow Lights. They look like this. They set up fairly easily. They have like a, like an on off switch. Pretty good. It's pretty light in here, so it's hard to see, but I've got three of them. Um, 
Um, I couldn't find them Amazon.com, but Amazon does have other like full spectrum lights and stuff, or I'll link it to the um, Amazon.ca site where they have them for about $16 Canadian. So um, I'll link it, but I couldn't find them on the um, like Amazon in the United States. So, and then I use a good seed starting mix. Uh, this one's miracle Grow, but I also will use Pro Mix, and that's what I'll link because I prefer the Pro Mix uh, seed starter. It's organic seed starter mix, so that's nice. And then I get these trays. I just buy these trays or use them <laughs> as when I have bought other plants and I have trays left over. But most importantly, I have these, these lids. And then I use anything that I have to put the seed starter uh, soil in and plants in. I use old ones. I'm just gonna give these a wash. Make sure you wash them out pretty pretty carefully. And uh, But I mean, I'll use anything. I'll use like Chinese food leftover, <laughs> take out containers or whatever I can plant in. It doesn't matter. I have bigger ones and stuff. So I fill the tray, fill it with seeds. I'll plant it in anything. These are just really dirty. Just needs to have a wash clearly. And then once they're all in there, you really need a good cover. So there we go. That's what it looks like with the cover on it. I'll try to find some links to those seed tray covers as well. And I also have these heating pads that go underneath for good seed germination, especially things like peppers. They need it to be really warm in order for them to germinate. This is interesting, it has some info here, how long it takes for things to germinate. I do have three of them. The other one is in my yogurt box. <laughs> so I got I to gotta pull it out. So that's my setup. This hasn't always been my setup. When I first started, I just started with these seed trays in a sunny window and uh, I sort of did the best that I could. I didn't have grow lights. Um, this is making it easier. I can do it anywhere in my house. Um, I don't, it doesn't have to be in front of a, a bright window. Sometimes when the plants are a little bit bigger, I will move them up into this window and it sort of takes over this whole space. So, but for now, they will live here. What I will do is set the lights up on a timer. We have this uh, like old sprinkler timer, I think it is. And once that's set up, we have the lights will go on and off, but the, the heating pads will stay, will stay on, so. There you go, that's what I've got for my setup. I have a lot more of these seed containers and I have a lot more of these trays just uh, everywhere really. So you guys maybe leave me a comment in the description below and let me know if you guys are planting a garden, if you're even planting a small garden, um, what kinds of things you're gonna grow. Are you ever you're growing anything new, anything that you're excited about? And, uh, and you can tell me how far behind I am in starting my seeds. <laughs> I'm a little bit behind, probably two weeks behind with starting my seeds. So we'll try to get caught up. But yeah, I'd love to hear what you guys are planning in your gardens, what you're excited about growing. And uh, yeah, if you're starting to feel that spring, spring fever, spring, I don't know getting ready, getting ready to get outside. Everything was melting so much yesterday. We had so much rain for some reason and it's starting to feel like I need to get stuff growing again. If you enjoyed the video and are excited about the new series, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. You can click my face to uh, subscribe so that you're notified when I have new videos out. Also, I will post, if you haven't had a chance to see any of my Wander Harvest Cook videos where I wander around in the garden, harvest some produce and then either preserve or make some interesting fun meals out of it. I will provide a link to that playlist here. And if you want, check out the join button and become a member for some other little perks and to help support my channel. Thanks for being here.